The gospel of Jesus Christ is the solution to the woes of man. How much of it you know, determines how well you reign in life. Join us. At Shepherd's Love Worldwide, opposite top radio, circle across, as the man of God, Apostle Johnsburg, takes us through sound teaching, and instruction in the word. Shepherd's Love Worldwide, making Christ prominent, in our generation. So we've been on a series for some time now. Today, please pardon my voice in case of in case it. Yes. Last week we said that we are the aroma of Christ. We are the aroma of Christ. And that God God wants to diffuse his knowledge through us to every corner. God wants to to spread. You see, there's a certain knowledge that God wants men to have. And that is the knowledge of Christ. You see, often you hear people saying that, oh, the Bible, the, the, the Bible, eh, everybody can get their own meaning from it. Listen to me. It doesn't happen like that. It's not true. What it didn't mean years ago, it cannot mean today. What the writer was communicating, you know, it cannot change. You know, people say that, oh, Bible, dear, will be having a revelation. Well, see, when you do that, you open the door for heresy. At the moment you believe that, I mean, who is that? The moment you believe that, the moment you believe that, the moment you believe that, the Bible, you can read anything, and in fact, we can read the same thing and get different meanings. You open the door for heresy. You open the door for wrong teachings, wrong doctrine. You open the door for negative things. So there's there's a meaning. What many people usually do is that they are trying to read meanings into the word. They are trying to read meanings into it. But that's not what God expects from us. God does not want us to read meaning into the word. The word means something. The word has a meaning. The word has something it is saying. The word of God has a voice. So what you do is that, you see, and the problem is we don't contextualize the word. We read a word and out of context. We don't follow the line of thoughts. We don't follow what is happening. Because whether you like it or not, not everything in the Bible is for you. Not everything in the Bible is for the believer. Because in the Bible you see what angel said, what God said. What demons said, what men said. There's a group, and that group, in the gospel according to Saint Luke, the Bible says that certain disciples met Jesus on to Emmaus. You remember? And then they were they were in fact they were gossiping, and Jesus joined them. Please, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, the voice is some way, but I'm wondering, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those things. The last time I was saying to somebody that, you see, then you come and say that if you're a pastor, it's a joke. Hey, it'd be hard work. Like, you didn't feel them. You, you can hear it in your body. <laughs> you see, oh, but God gives us grace. And we are strengthened, so yeah, please just a moment. Aha, uh-huh. so I was saying that we don't contextualize God's word, that is, we don't read the word of God in context. That's the, the issue. We don't read it in context. So every time we take the word out of context and try to make the word mean what it, it is not supposed to mean. Now listen, anytime you hear people saying that, oh, if such people are your friends, you either teach them or you run from them. Because they introduce you to false doctrines. But once you think like that, it's, it, it's easy to be deceived. Because the, the word of God has a voice. The writer of that particular book or whatever scripture has something he was communicating. Now, on the road to Emmaus, two people met 
two disciples were walking gossiping and Jesus met them and the Bible says that Jesus began to explain these guys they were privileged they were very privileged in fact I'm shocked why they didn't write any book it tells you that I say, because why am I saying they were privileged because in just that journey Jesus explained the whole Bible to them because the Bible said beginning at Moses and the prophet he explained everything about himself so like they should have had a clearer imagine imagine Paul with such such a privilege to walk with Jesus and Jesus himself teaching him what the Bible is about he would have written other books but these two guys so now back to the scripture so that's Luke 24 27 so last week we were saying that we are the aroma of Christ we are the aroma God wants to diffuse the knowledge of Jesus Christ you see that is the knowledge that God wants men to have that is the knowledge that God is promoting in these last days Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 there's something, there's an agenda of God in these last days. And the agenda of God for these end times is Jesus Christ. That is God's agenda that God is pushing. The agenda that God is pushing in this end time is Jesus. He says, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. So at various times and in various ways. He spoke to the fathers in time past using what? The prophets. Next verse. Has in these last days, in these last days, spoken to us by his son. So the language that God is speaking in these last days is what? His son. God is promoting a certain agenda. And that agenda is Jesus. That's what he wants men to know. That's what he is pushing that's what god is pushing it's an agenda god is pushing his son has spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed let's let's stay here he has spoken in this last you see god is saying something in this last days god is saying, once you believe that we are in the last days you have to believe the message for the last days if you agree that we are in the last days then you must agree that in the last days there's a certain message and that message is about Jesus that is the message that God is pushing it's a message about Christ it's a message now let's the last time we were reading a scripture in John chapter what it was a long read we didn't finish it John chapter 5 verse 16 to verse 47 um, I think that somebody should read the scripture so that at least. John chapter 5 verse 16 for this reason the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath but Jesus answered them my father has been working until now and I have been working Therefore, the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making, making, him, making himself equal with God. Now, that statement, the Jews, though they didn't have a relationship with God, they understood that ah, when you call God father, it means that there's, there's a DNA of God inside you. So they were annoyed with Jesus. That uh, why will you, a guy, a man, call God? We know you, you are a normal guy. It tells you how normal Jesus was. It tells you that when you, when you saw Jesus, you wouldn't really see anything divine about him. It tells you that truly he was one of us. Truly he was one of us. He looked like a regular human being. He looked like a regular human being. So they were offended that ah, why will you call yourself a son of God? Once you call yourself a son of God, it means you have 
you have made yourself equal with God. So imagine what now that is our right in the New Testament that the Spirit says that we are sons. The Spirit bears witness that we are sons. It means that there's a part of God in us. This is why they were annoyed with Jesus. Because God cannot give birth to an antelope. You see, every animal, everything in this world produces after its kind. So if you say you're a child of God, God, if a dog gives birth to a dog, then God will give birth to what as a child? Yes. So ye are gods. Ye are gods. Ye are gods. There's a part of divinity inside you. There's divinity inside you. Now that you are born again. Now that you are born again. Please let's continue. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. For the father loves the son, and shows him all things that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these, that you may marvel. For as the father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the son gives life to whom he will. You see, so Jesus came to this world to give life. To give life. To give life to whom he will. He came to give life. You see, Jesus didn't come and joke. This week, the whole world will be celebrating Easter. The whole world will be honoring his death, which is a good thing. In fact, mostly I say that it is this week that the whole world preaches the same message we should be preaching every day. It is this week that we will actually talk about his death. Then after that, we go back to our messages. We shouldn't be so. It is an everyday message. This week I can predict a, many things that will happen in many churches. Like when they say convention, I can tell you what will happen. Maybe we can, it's, it's too easy to organize one. We can just say, oh, the theme for our convention this week is power in the blood. And we start on Thursday. We start on Holy Thursday. And we start reading about the scriptures that talked about his death. Good Friday, we come. Good Friday, I say everybody should wear black and red. No, no black and white because Jesus was, was not young. He was not old. He was young. He was a young man who died. So black and red. You understand? then Saturday we still continue in that mood Sunday we all wear white to celebrate his triumphant what resurrection you see that's how, that's how far religion can go with you but actually God God wants that you see the message for the resurrection is an everyday message Jesus has risen the, the tomb is empty this is what the angel said why are you looking for the living among the dead it's an everyday message and the message is this he came to give life. He came to do something remarkable on us. He came to give life. He came to give life. He says the son can give life to anyone he, he, he chooses. That is why anyone that chooses to believe in him receives life. So I keep telling you, Jesus did not come to make bad men good. He came to make dead men live. Dead men live. The whole world was dead dead in sin dead in sin as a result of Adam's sin the whole world was dead and Jesus came and brought the antidote to death which is life 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 and life forever life it is, that's what he brought he himself said a time is coming when the dead will hear the voice of the son of God and those that will hear will come out of their graves When, when, when they, they visited the house of Lazarus when he was dead, Martha said, oh, if you had come, you would not have died. He said, don't worry, I'm the resurrection and the life. Many who saw Rieno, any he, the, the man, he knew why he was here. He knew why he was here. He knew why he was here. And he knew what his death would bring. And it will interest you to know that do you know that most of the names in the Old Testament, when you look at the meanings, everything points to Jesus. 
that's one of the, the teachings that I'm expecting and trusting God that we can do this here. So we go back from the time of Noah. You see, Noah means this, this means this. When you come back, you see that, ah, God was writing his story long time using several men. Because there's somebody whose name means his death shall bring. That's the person's name, the meaning. His death shall bring. And Noah means rest. It's amazing. It's an amazing thing. So that when we go back to, we are talking about Noah. When we go back to Noah's story, for example, why is it that? Why is it that? The ark was able to go ah, on the waters ah, and then landed on a mountain called Ararat. If you read your Bible, Ararat. Ararat means curse revenge curse reversed the curse had been reversed but what what will interest you more it was a culture in those times now I've digressed a bit to tell you that all through the stories Jesus was being proclaimed an aspect of Christ was being shown for example Moses Moses you realize that he was put in a basket and they put him on water and how did they trust that the basket would go out and go and land here for him to be found? The same way the ark was also navigated by God on water like that ah, to a place of rest. You see that there is always a linkage. But I'm trusting God later this year, we'll go into the scriptures power. I'll we'll dig the scriptures here. That I tell my voice. But now you see, he came to give life. Yeah. For the father judges no one, but he has committed all judgment to the son. That all should honor the son just as they honor the father. He who does not honor the son does not honor the father who he who sent him. Mm. So have you seen people saying that? Oh, I believe in God, I don't believe in Jesus. As for me, I believe in God. But Jesus, look at He who does not honor me, does not honor the Father that sent me. Oh, I believe in God, oh, but you see, that Jesus story, I believe that there's a supreme power that created the world. I believe that there's, there's a God somewhere. But that Jesus story is too fake. He's a white man. No, 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 it's too fake. It's too fake. He said, he who does not honor the son does not honor the, father, honor the father who sent him. Next verse. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. It's too easy to have life. It's too easy. It is rather difficult. See, this is why people will go to hell. That they wish I all meet. You will see that the man is faithful to his word. It is, you see, God will never do something outside the confines of his word. God will never. And his word says that most assured, you see, it's an assurance. This, this is what we call blessed assurance. This is what Paul now introduces as blessed assurance. The other day, a man of God was saying that Paul used to tell us, in fact, Paul was warning us about false teachers. But these days, you find people warning us about Paul. <laughs> I was having a chat with my friend when that's what he said to me. <laughs> Look, most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word, that is how to be saved. He who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. You don't pay for it, you don't work for it. You just hear the word and believe the word. You hear and believe the word, that's how to be saved. That's how to have life. That's how to have life. And this is what others who have rejected will go to hell. Will go to, and that's why we are preaching. And God expects that we will we'll fill everywhere with his fragrance. Preach the gospel to them. Keep pushing. Some of your friends, whether you like it or not, you can preach to them a thousand years. They will never believe. And what you do is to add prayer. I read a story of a man who preached to one guy 40 years and the guy never believed. 
It was at his funeral. The man of God died. His funeral. Then the guy lifted his hands. The funeral was like a crusade. At the funeral. So the man of God in his lifetime never saw the guy believe. It was at his funeral when he was in the casket. Then the guy lifted his hands. But no matter what, we will win some. We will win some. And this is how, this is the message that saves. He who hears my word and believes in him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment. He shall not do what? You see, what the Bible calls, or what we call judgment day, judgment day, there will be gnashing of teeth. It's not for the church. Oh. There's, an, there's another judgment which is in the Bible. That one is for the church. You see, don't confuse it. There are two kinds of judgment. There are two kinds of judgment in the Bible. But what we call judgment day, the one that is with gnashing of teeth, and what? With fear, with trembling. That one is not for the church. Because the church has passed this one from death into life and will not come into that kind of judgment. But the church will, will face a different judgment. Then the gnashing of teeth, <coughs> sorry, the gnashing of teeth is for the people of the world, the unbelievers. They never believe the gospel. They will gnash their teeth. But the church, the church will come to a certain kind of judgment called the white throne judgment or the bema seat. Please, can we have the scripture? Can you help us? In Corinthians, Paul talks about it. It's called the white throne judgment or the bema seat. B-E-M-A. The bema seat judgment. He says we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the reward for what we did in our bodies that's the one the church will come for so that day those that said that those that said that oh i believe in jesus let me live anyhow you will see that your work will burn because paul has said that on that day he will try our works with fire some will be hey you know hey hey sure they make it while the sun shines it's sawdust sawdust if you live near where they mill the year, it's okay. <coughs> Can you help us? Okay, you are working on it. So, the judgment is talking about there are two kinds of judgment in the Bible. The, the believer has passed the first one. That one, that, that judgment is for condemnation. And the Bible has exempted us because there is no condemnation. For them that are in Christ Jesus. So we can't come for that kind of judgment. We have passed that one. That one is not, you are not coming to the end. That one, you, you are not saved, go to hell. You didn't believe, go to hell. But there's another judgment for the church. And that's called the, the white throne judgment or the bema seat judgment. Yes, Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ That each one may receive the things done in the body That's for this one, the church will be there That's, This is the judgment we will, we will face So if you are living carelessly and thinking that Oh, I'm under grace Grace is not for carelessness even when you check the scriptures, you see in Galatians 5, he said, the Lord has called us to freedom, but let us not use this freedom as an occasion for the flesh. That, oh, we are under grace, oh, Charlie. Let's sleep around. Let's do this. Let's, oh, Charlie. Peter said, Peter said, know the response to give everyone. Know the response to give everyone. At the all night, I was giving an example that same Peter, when he was not matured, he was just following Jesus for food and the fame that comes with it. You know how you can follow somebody who is prominent, people like the person, now it's also benefiting. You know that thing? Like you follow one guy. Today, because of my voice, so I'm trying to, the voice now is limited, so I'm not, I'm not cracking plenty things. 
I'm respecting myself. <laughs> so you know how you can follow somebody who is respected and they usually respect you. You know how like maybe some benefits be and you you get some. <laughs> Let me give you an example. Maybe I go somewhere with Sir Louis. Uh, <laughs> Is your master no day, boy day? So Peter and Co. At that time, see, they, they really didn't know what Jesus was doing. They were just mostly they were just following him. Until he, the Bible said one day he breathed on them and what they, he opened the understanding. Even that one Christ still. It was later when Jesus left, the Holy Spirit came that truly they now began to understand certain things. So for example, you see Peter asking Jesus, we have left everything and we have followed you. What will we get? And Jesus said, there is no one who has left houses, mother, etc., etc., that will not receive a reward. That was Peter who, when he was a child, just following Jesus around. Now Peter, who is maturing now in, 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 his, in his book, he says that he has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Same Peter that was asking, what will we get? Now he writes, he has given to us all things that pertain to life. Now he knew that it's not what we we have it. We have something. So we are talking about this. Aha. Then I saw a great white throne. We'll go back to Corinthians again. So please just stay on guard. I saw, please help us, help us. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Mm. And I saw the dead, small and great, mm. standing before God, mm. and books were opened. You know this, we can preach a message with this. And I can stand on this and preach condemnation, and when you go home, you'll be afraid. <laughs> But that is not what God wants. Listen, please look. That's why in our church we encourage you to write. Be like a Berean Jew. Write it when you go back. Go and check it yourself. Maybe a Hana kind Bible be any your favorite. Just as some translations can have issues. For example, in most French countries, French speaking countries, the Bible they use is LSG. Louis Segon, Louis Segon. The Louis Segon, he has so many omissions. Anyway. <laughs> Do you know that Bible? Lu- Louis Segon. Have you heard it before? Okay. <laughs> Please read with us. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, mm. and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Mm. And the dead were judged according to their works mm. by the things which were written in the books. Mm. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, mm. and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. Mm. That day, something's about to happen in this world. <laughs> you see the scripture I'm reading? People who have died, you couldn't find them. Even people that were cremated, they were cremated, they were burnt, they will come back. I mean, it's the body that is, but the spirit is there. So let, let's let's stay up there, verse twelve. So books were opened. I saw the dead. He said the great white throne, right? And I saw the dead. Oh, help us! Help us. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. Mm. And books were opened. Mm. And another book was opened, mm. which is oh, the book books of life. And another book. Uh, and the other book is the book of life. And the one that their names were not found is your name in the book of life. How do you get your name in this book? How do you get your name in this book? Oh, you up to this time, you see, there are some things that there are some things that are, I am a need just say, Oh, we have thought it, you should just we can pick somebody from a Kwaba class and just say, How do you do it? And they should be able to do to say it. <laughs> <laughs> this thing that this man has said <laughs> ah, 
the honor anything of Pacho, Pacho. I mean, anything of Pacho, Pacho. He can wait. The whole place be quiet. So please read again. And, and I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Okay. So they were judged according to their works by the things which were written. There, there's one that says that anyone whose name was not found, can you help us? It's like, I didn't plan to talk about this. That's why I'm not mentioning the scriptures. And anyone, aha. Uh -huh. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So why is it that they didn't base on the other books to cast them? But they, they base on the book of life. To go into the lake of fire, it was the book of life that determined it. So what about the other books? You are not in church. Let's read again. Please go back, go back again. You see. Can we have can I have some of your your let's say some diaries, please? I hope you can identify. Okay. So let's say just this four. We have just this four, four diaries. Please let's go back. And, and I saw the dead. Uh-huh. And I saw the dead. Okay. Great and small, small and great, standing before God. Mm. And books were opened. Please, up to this point, books were opened. So let's say, let's say literally books were opened. And another book was opened. And another book was opened. So they were all what? Books were so, opened. Another book was opened. Which is the book of life. This is what? The book of life. Okay. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. So these books, we think it's for what? Works. You are getting it. This one is their works they were is there with by the things they were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books because he has separate this one already you see book of life book of life is different from what books book of life now let's continue so this one their works were in it and this one was what book of life let's continue And any and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So I'm saying that if they are all books, why is it that he doesn't look here to cast them into the lake of fire? But he looks here rather. Because you go to hell not by what you do. You will go to hell not because of what you have done. You will go to hell because you didn't believe. Your name was not in what? The book of life. Please, can we read another translation? Verse 15, another. The devil is not in church today. Can we read another translation? Another translation, please. So many translations. Oh, because I mentioned Louis Segon. You want to read Louis Segon? We don't understand French. <laughs> I also saw the dead. Oh, verse 15, verse 15. But it will be too long. Verse 15 alone is okay. I think we have got this one, so verse 15 is okay. And if anyone's name was not found recorded in the book of life, he was held into the lake of fire. So, among the books, which book is more important? The book of life. Because that one, when your name is not what? So, so what does it take for, your, for you to enter the lake of fire? So listen, how about my name is here for all the nice things, but my name is not here? How about, so listen, there are unbelievers eh, who are courteous more than you. There are unbelievers who are gentle more than you. But you see, that is not the criteria to be saved. For salvation, you must hear and believe the gospel. You must not be a nice guy. 
what makes you safe? Someone say, oh, I'm, I'm, you see, virginity is very good. It's fine. It, it, is, it is good. In the, in the gospel, you will see that we should keep our bodies because our bodies are the temple of God. But if you think that virginity is what will make you safe, you are joking. It is good, oh. Oh, it is a good thing. It is a good thing. On Friday, I was even telling us that if you are doing it, please stop. But you see, uh, works, works does not guarantee salvation. You are saved because your name. And how do you get your name here? By hearing and believing. That's all. Jesus said it right now when we're reading in John 5. He said that anyone that hears my word and believes it receives everlasting life that is how your name you see there are some christians that don't know that salvation is a one-time thing so every time you want to write your name <laughs> every every week every week they may, they may not come to the front they will sit down. When they say, oh, raise your hand, come forward. And people come forward. They will, be, they will be seated and still be saying the same thing. Dear Lord Jesus, I, I receive you. Heaven doesn't work like that. The day you believe Jesus, you are saved. <coughs> now your works. This is where the gospel trains you. The teaching of the word trains you to live like a Christian. As for salvation there, it be book of life matter. So if your name is not so, can you see from the story? If your name was here and your attitude was perfect, I mean, if your name was not here, but your attitude was perfect, still because if anyone's name was not found recorded in the book of life. That is the that is the most important book of all the books. The book of life. For now, go with this understanding. Go with this understanding that it is a book and it's a book of life. Many, many years to come, as we match you, you will see that it's not a book. You see that it is a person. You see that anyone that was not found, he is the one that did. I don't know you, but you, the right now, you forget about what I just said. It's a book, just book. It's a book. So you, this one is okay. So if your name was not here, once they open, oh, actually, actually, no, no, no. If your name was not found there, Bonsan Jemana Obeko. Let's read another, another translation. I think it's, get, it's, it's getting clearer. Yes, Please, another translation. Then anyone whose name wasn't found written in the scroll of life was thrown into the fairy lake. That's all. Once your name is not here, there's no please. Actually, at my mother said, please, my father said, no, 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 no. So that's why last week I told you that the songwriter said, Obiba Riasina Wanfa Christo, our Baba Senimre. Baba Senimre. Once your name is not there, there's no, oh please. Oh please, please, next week. Please. The chance to repent, to hear the gospel is now. That's why I said, today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. That's why we are going out. And by God's grace, by God's grace, next week, Sunday, we'll be, we'll be launching the Bible tract. Next week, Sunday. It's called, it's called Christ for All. It's called Christ for All. So, when, when it's free, because we have paid for it, when I say we, all of us, it's our partnership, Partnership are all day banal. Nay, they are quite printing. But we share freely. We share. And and I even want to announce that if you have a testimony to share, you can share with Sir Lewis and let's 
we, there's a place for testimonies. Only, only that, please don't share personal testimonies. Like maybe where you are working. Those ones, they are for church. This one, you don't know where it's going. So testimonies that are personal, please don't bring that one. We want testimonies like how the church has helped you, how finding or listening to the messages, uh, those ones, they are general. But maybe you got a job, no, 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 no. That's, that, that one will not be included. Please, I hope it is okay. So that you don't reveal your personal details. Because these are things we'll be sharing. So it's not nice that we share your personal things out there. But general things like, oh, you are now finding the truth and challenge. You are growing in it. Nice one. So I think that by the close of today is a, is a good time. Yes, because next week Sunday, the copies will be available. And then it's Easter, so you can just bless someone with it. Free cry. Uh -huh. If your name was not there, then anyone whose name wasn't found written in the scroll of life was, was thrown into the fairy lake. Was thrown there. We were thrown into the, the, the fairy lake. Lake of fire. Anyone whose name was not there. So I think that is okay. Now let's go back to 2 Corinthians, please. Thank you so much. 2 Corinthians. Where we were reading, aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So you realize that there is one book for works, or there are books for works, what we just saw. So that one, believers will, will come there. Believers will be there. That's called the great throne, white throne judgment. Or the Bema seat of Christ. In fact, you can, if you have your Google, you can write, you can Google Bema seat, Bema seat judgment. B-E-M-A. -E I hope I'm correct. B-E-M-A -E seat. Bema seat judgment. And somebody can read for us. Please, have you seen it? Be my seat. Be my seat. Be my seat. Maybe you like you like um, BMW, so you hear be my seat. If you are if you are heaven, if you are heaven, if you are heaven. One of the things I don't know how to do is to swim. Is to swim. So one day. One day, I think that I'd, when I'm done with the work that God has given me to do, I think that now I'll be desiring that when I meet the Lord Jesus in heaven, we have to go for swimming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care what your, 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 you know how children are. Children don't care about how busy you are. They just, they just come to you, daddy. Let's go in. So that's what I want to do. That I don't care what you are doing in heaven, whether the, the hosts are jumping to you or whatever. Just let's go for swimming. I want to learn. But you say, now who has said, you see, no, no, because you see our heaven. Heaven, dear no, me You see, this is the this is the assurance the gospel gives you. At first, eh, it wasn't like this. When I hear heaven in my heart, because I, I didn't know much, and I was not learning much, and all the messages I hear, me do already dear, but you see, I don't really know the truth. So everything I hear about heaven is all fear. That hey, what will, hey, what will happen to me? What will, so I couldn't even think of swimming with Jesus until the truth I started being taught the truth I learned it you see one of the things you must have is you must be teachable if you want to grow you must be teachable if you are so proud that you cannot learn oh, then you don't learn anything whether you like it or not even in normal life normal life you don't know everything normal life cry you don't know everything Normal life. Me yes, so food does not mean that meaning be a. You will be on him be a or on any Christo. Must be teachable. So he says that we will receive what we did in our body. So if you think that oh, it's my body, I'm using it anyhow. Relax. That day they will show you everything you did with your body. You bring it like is 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 like flora tissue. And guess what? It will be tried in fire. So they are bringing. What do you think will happen? Before we read this, before Second Corinthians, no, First Corinthians three. First Corinthians, he talks about that, that no foundation can anyone lay which has been laid, which is Christ, 
we must be careful how we build because we'll give an account. That's it. First Corinthians 3. No foundation can anyone lay. First Corinthians 3, what? 11. Yes, please read. For no other found foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Salvation has been dealt with. Dealt with. I'm so happy when it comes to Easter because that's when you hear the powerful sermon. You hear finish in his blood. Mm. You hear that Jesus has defeated Hades. Jesus has paid. Jesus has paid. Good Friday, we all remember. It's just sad that the next week, then we go back to breaking covens. We go back to so many things. But the work has been done. The foundation has been laid. One day, God will bless you. You start building your house. You don't need so many foundations. You realize it. Why you start doing some of these things? Once you do the foundation for the work, Asa, you start building what? On it. There's nobody who is building who will make a foundation and go and make another one. And go and make another one. And go and make another one. That's attempting to be saved by your works. That's how it looks like. Instead of just accepting that Jesus did it all. He did it all at the cross. And Jesus cried loudly for everybody to hear. He shouted in Hebrew, Tetelestai. It is finished. Then he gave up his ghost. Gave up his ghost. So, if, if Jesus said it is finished and we are saying it is not finished, who should we believe? No other foundation can anyone lay than what? Next verse. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, so, hay, straw. <coughs> so, your works, what you do now that you are saved, how you live is, is what he calls building what? Building on the foundation. And, and how you live is either you are living what? Gold. Gold. Silver. Silver. Precious stones. Precious stones. Wood. Or what? Hay. Straw. Hay. Straw. Wood. Next verse. Each one's work will become clear. You see, so it, that's the works. Each one's work. So your work can be what? Gold. Gold. Silver. Silver. Straw. Straw. Precious wood. Precious stones. Hay. Each one's work. That's, that, that was what was in that, that book. Works. How you lived. How you lived the divine life now. Were you alive to your world or you joined your world to become so dark? How great was the darkness? Next verse. So, okay, no, I think that's fine. Each one's work will become clear. Uh -huh. For the day will declare it. Do you see? That is that day. That is the, the, the judgment day for the church. Because it's the day. The day will declare it. The day will, will expose it. The day will show. Don't worry. How many you are building? Oh. You see, there are some things that you may think that nobody saw. I God saw it. That's why one day I was telling you that some of you, people have done things to you and you want to reply them. Sometimes you want to even write it on your status. So that they will see. You want to give, give it to them. Sometimes calm down. Whatever they did to you, God also saw it. Relax. You see, God, God is the one that can vindicate you. Some of the explanation that you are explaining to people, they are just you are rather compounding the problem. So you gather this one, you say, Maneshi, hey, you gather this one, Maneshi. Now you're the woke up. Have you been in such a situation before? You want to stop it, and every time they are calling you, they are explaining, they are no. Don't worry, each one's work. The day will declare it. The day will come. That one, nobody can hide. Huh? Because it will be revealed by fire. You see? The, the, the test, it will be run through fire. So I said, imagine that they have brought your work and it was floral tissue. Everything you did in this world. And they are carrying it, angels are carrying it like this. Big, big bundles. And they are approaching fire. It will, they will even get the, the heat to start melting. But remember also, there, there's what? Hey, there's wood, there's precious, there's gold. As for gold, it even needs fire to become nicer. 
So imagine how your works. You live like a Christian truly. You know, there are some people, they are only in church that they are Christians. When they go home, you say, hey, how them were? Oh, have you not met people like that? Some of them are landlords and landladies. And in their churches, they are their front seats. It's like, Nami bad. they will talk to them first. But when you interact with them, you see that, hey! Some of them, if you engage them, and you don't know that it is them, you think that, oh, the church is not good. The church. But I say, always know, separate the church. And just, if it's somebody like that, maybe your landlord, be your landlady, just know that, just be sure that, Munch Ramosa, your Noana, or maybe you, you yourself cry. You yourself. Maybe when we start coming for visitation in May, and we come to you and say, we are looking for lady this, brother this. They say, hey! Hey! When we are sitting with you, they come and pass their phone. Yeah! Who's yeah. you? I'm sorry for a baby. Why are you? On casa. Mukos is here. Hey! Boss, they can't really tell. You know, some, some, of, some of us in our workplaces, our colleagues can't tell whether we have received Jesus or they are receiving him. Or they can't. That is, they can't really tell who you are. Because everything they are doing, you are part. Sometimes you are even the one that gives the idea. Not Sunday, Usawa, sorry. So they can't really tell. Like, some of when you start posting church on your status, they say, hey. Some of you, they message you that, hey. Hey, it be you or someone post for you. Is your phone stolen? So, as for the works, as for the works, as for the works, one day I said that, you see, in the Bible, you find so many literary devices. But the only thing you will not find in the Bible is, um, oh, hyperbole, yes, exaggerations. Nothing is exaggerated in the Bible. Nothing is exaggerated. Nothing. And now see, the believer's character and his conduct is an oxymoron. If you remember your literature, your small literature, oxymoron is direct opposite. It's like black and white. So the believer is saved, but he can be fully. Then you say, hey, I can't wait a whole foolish hand. <laughs> Have you seen that kind of situation before? Yes, sir. Imagine that the president's son that is mingling with commoners and fooling with them. People will say, hey, yo, this high office, and you are, you are in the gutter. You're on the streets. So the believer's character character. That's, that, that one deals with who he is now in Christ. And his conduct, it can be the opposite. That's why I ask you that it's possible that somebody had zero at the work site. His work was floral tissue. But his name could be in the book of life. So for that guy, it will be like work or graduation. Speech and prize giving day. Now we in Ashri. We in that day. Now you have a man for the best student in this. Now bonds and out your. Then, then you wish that. Oh, I wish I could come back to the earth again. Maybe you are here, so you think that after a second I'm in heaven. <laughs> you know that thing. You think that ah, if my wife says zero, I am in the book of life. Ah, after, but it will shock you that day. You see that oh, because he, the promise he gives eh, in Revelation, Jesus said some of the people, he will give them a precious stone that has a name that nobody knows. It's in Revelation. Imagine that you right before your eyes. You are seeing people receiving things from Jesus. He is shaking their hands. Good and faithful servant. Now you will know, be remembering, oh, I wish I could go again. So that means I could get this. Have you gone to graduation and you felt like, I have to learn. Uh, speech and I have to learn. I have to learn. It's like a wake up call to you. But oftentimes we are not we are not motivated. Oftentimes after that we just oh massa massa. We just oh massa. 
They are coming to my Ghana and I know. <laughs> so please finish it and the fire will test each one's work so this one there it is judgment that will all be there but the one for condemnation and gnashing of teeth we will not be there because we have an escape through Jesus mm. you understand so the, this one it is fire fire will judge judgment finish it it will be revealed uh, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is so the fire will show what kind of work it is and i said what if you come with hay or your uh, uh, <laughs> you are an robber and the robber is a pullet in the body <laughs> and they have guarded it <laughs> and they have just brought it in 10 seconds you see that everything has been <laughs> but surely there will be people that their works will be gold and I said most of these people we, will, we may never have heard of some of them on social media in their corner they were living for Jesus in their corner in their corner and it's possible that we may have pastors we may have pastors whose work will be here Yes, their work will be here. And we may have congregation members who will be gold. But they never had the microphone to preach. But in church. But in their corners, they were shining the light. They were shining the light. So as for the works, you may say, oh, and yet it's very important. Very important. But what, what saves you is not works. That's, that's, that's the clarity. You are not saved by works. You are saved by grace through faith. And faith where? In the gospel. Simple. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? A yes, uh, simple uh, a So back to back to John 5. In 2 Corinthians 5, we read that we will appear before the dead the judgment seat of Christ to receive in our bodies what we did so finish it please. for this reason the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had done these things you have gone, you have gone back too much please Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him, who sent me, has everlasting life, and shall not come into judgment. So this is what sent us all the way. We will not come into that judgment which is for condemnation. Because, he gave a reason. Because what? But has passed from death into life. We will not come into this judgment because we have passed from death into life. Because we have anybody that has believed in Christ Jesus has passed from death into life because Jesus brought life and what it takes to receive this life is, is not to do anything but to believe so the day you lifted your hand and said Lord Jesus I accept you into my heart you were receiving life physically your ears did not change your eye did not change your hair color did not change your body size did not change but something happened to your spirit because it is spiritual birth it is spiritual birth and he says you have received life you have come you have passed from death and you have come into life you have come into life you have come into life next verse please most assuredly I say to you the hour is coming and, is, and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. You see, he knew it all. You see, Jesus, at this time, understand that most of the statements that Jesus made, because the Holy Spirit was not fully commissioned to work, he made figurative statements mostly. He made coded statements. Yet mostly, yes, because the Holy Spirit was not yet there working fully or full time like he how he is now so right now because the holy spirit is working now he has come and he is with us now 
we can take this scripture and say, oh, this is what he meant by the dead will live. They will hear his voice and live. Remember one of the things he said about the Holy Spirit in John 14. Jesus said, he was going to give us the Holy Spirit who will remind us of all the things he has said and bring us into what? All truth. And one of such truth is this. So, mostly you see Jesus talking in figurative speeches. Coded statements. But they had meanings. And to get these meanings, you need the Holy Spirit. And one of such coded statements is this one. The hour is coming. And now is. You see, it is coming. And now is. He knew, Jesus knew he was going to die. Mm. He knew what his death would bring. The hour is coming. This is a man who knew that I'm going to die. And me wait, you know, this and this and this is what will come. He says, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. How will the dead hear his voice? Do you know that statement? Do you know what that statement is like? When we preach the gospel to someone, it is as though Jesus is talking to them. Anytime we are preaching to people, we are giving them an opportunity to hear the voice of the Son of God and live. That is what it means. Anytime we preach to people, that's why I said that. Make this your number one priority. Be a soul winner. Be a soul winner. You don't need to be a pastor to be a soul winner. You just need to be born again to be a soul winner. So in the university, the university Christian fellowship, they are, they are look, their motto was what? Know Christ and make him known. Simple. Know Christ and make him known. Know Christ and make him introduce him to your friends. So anytime we preach, we are giving people the chance to hear the voice of the Son of God. Because you know Jesus won't stand anywhere in this world and say, hey, dead people, hear my voice. It is when we are preaching. So as I'm talking, it is, it is as though like the voice of the Son of God is being heard. It's being heard. <coughs> yes. Next verse. For as the Father has life in himself, mm. so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. Simple. As the Father has life, he has given the Son to have life. Ah. Uh -huh. And has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the son of man. He has given him authority to execute judgment. See that the people are in for a shock. When you get to heaven and they stand before the throne for judgment that is for condemnation. They see that is Jesus sitting there. You see, e. people that said, Oh, I believe in God, but I don't believe in Jesus. I believe that God is supreme, but I don't. Then they'll get there and see that God, 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 Christo Neteho. As for my, I be Christo way they there. Then they, they now start doing, <coughs> can I get water? Can you, the thing is, I'm a lake, oh, lake by its fire. Hey! These days, look at how hot the weather is. Now, we'll be a question lake of fire, mu. These days, the weather is so hot that even when you bath, cry, you are sweating. The AC cry is not. Have you noticed? The AC cry is not firing like that. When you, when you leave a place that has AC and you come out, it's like the heat. And in the heat, a certain country say it will turn off the light. How it makes it worse. In the night, you can't sleep. And I told you, there's one mosquito in my house. It's called Kofi. Every when the lights are out, he's singing. So imagine, even the heat here. Yes, some people cannot take it. Some people cannot take it. Now lake of fire. Now look. So you see, it's, it's very true. It's very correct that if you love your friends, you preach to them. So he says, seeing the danger, the terror that is coming, we warn men, we persuade men. 
seeing the terror that is coming. Because the coming of the Son of Man, he said it will be like the days of Noah. Well, how were the days of Noah? People were enjoying, oh, forget yourself. Ah. Forget yourself. Because he said, when they say peace, 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 destruction will come. The days of Noah. I'm sure when Noah was telling them, you see, everybody had a chance to enter the ark. But it's old. Oh, Jimmy, you know. Ah. What does it look like? Something's about to happen. Ah, this guy, this guy is too extreme. He's, he's beside himself. Until the floods came. And the whole world was wiped out. Wiped out. Wiped out. So he said, the coming of Jesus will be like that. See, we are saying, yeah, there, yeah, there, yeah, there, yeah, there, and, uh, when they least expect. Imagine how it will be like. Have you thought of this? That <coughs> sorry, as we are here, it is morning in Ghana. It is night in, in Australia. It is it is night in Singapore. It's by midnight in Singapore. Other places it is evening. Other places it is dawn in New York. It is like different times. So imagine at what time would the trumpet sound? Do, 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 do. It means that we say that the whole world will come in sync. And now no be other will be no be so high away. That's what that one. There's no scripture. Lest we, we move into heresy. Because sometimes you think you cannot be heretic until you start thinking. Ah, you see, the, I want to guide myself with a framework of scripture. If you, you see, the Bible is enough. I don't need any other thing. It's enough. Let me just be inside before you start thinking too much. You start thinking too much. Please continue. Don't marvel at this. For the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice. Hey, Jesus used a statement. Anyone that is not born again is like he's in, he's in a grave. <laughs> Anyone that is not born again, Jesus said they are in graves. <laughs> they are in graves. They are in graves. They are in graves. Then if they are in graves, then it is fitting for him as the mediator of the testament to also, to also enter a grave and come out to show that where you have been there have taken your place. Come out into life. So somebody sang a song. He said, May the Owuna Yesu Ababi Nyanimi. The Owuna Yesu Ababi Nyanimi. I slept the, the sleep of death. I was at the place of death. Jesus has come to wake me. He has gone to the place for you. If they are in graves, he himself entered grave. To show that I've been in your situation. Come out. He has taken our place so that we can take his place. He came like one of us to save all of us. Jesus was one of us. No man, nothing extra who about him. Even birth cry, you where you were born was better than where Jesus was born. You, you were born in some, some hospital. If I ask everybody where you want to say Kolebu, this this you mentioned. At least there was a bed. This one they gave it to me manger. Next verse, please. And come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, mm. and those who have done evil to the resurrection yes. of condemnation yes. Yes. hear the voice and come forth so now when you hear those who have done good it's not works he's talking about you. that's why sometimes the English language we, we have to go to bible language because listen the bible was written the new testament was written in greek and translated into other languages that we have the old testament was written in hebrew and aramaic and then translated into other languages so when you are translating in some, in some of these languages they have words that show things one word can mean three things so sometimes they choose one and use it but if you go back 
if you go back now there's technology on friday i was telling you there's an app called bible hub you can go on youtube and see how to use it if you really want to study the scriptures there's an app it's called bible hub or my my sword youtube when you google how to use this they will show you you can find you can trace any word in the bible when you take it you pick it you see they show you ah this is a root word this word means this you can even check the number of times it has occurred in the bible it makes bible study easy when you say those who have done good it's not talking about works like on friday i was telling you that jesus said blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god what does it mean to have a pure heart and then we were, we were answering, we were saying our things. Oh, pure heart, yeah, you have to be a good guy. Or oh, what again? Pure heart, yeah, what again can you have? You have a good conscience. Pure heart, yeah, what? No anger. No anger. You, you always think good for people. All these things are good virtues. But what he meant by having a pure heart. When you go and check the Bible and check the original Hebrew rendition, it's not having a good a cry. Even though having a good conscience is good, is a is a good thing to have. So I ask you, what he meant was that. Though I explain it, I would like to talk again. <clears throat> what he meant was that, do you know, Katita. In the hospital, when there's a surgical or medical intervention, they will use catheter to drain your urine. It's something they put in the bladder so that it, they will empty your urine. It's called catheter. Right? Now, the root word for pure in heart in that text is that thing, catheter. So what it means to have a good heart or a pure heart is, uh, I mean, pure in heart. What it means to be pure in heart is to have a heart that empties a heart that doesn't hold grudges a heart that let things go that's a pure in heart like things don't stay in your heart you understand but you see that without this understanding you think having a pure heart is that oh you you don't get angry no you can get angry but you just forget it if you don't get angry hey even me cry get angry me, I get angry a lot. Plenty. Like those who know, they know. Well, some of the time, when I'm angry, I don't want to hear anything. Just go, go, just stop the talking. When I'm knowing, you are not coming to explain it. Don't explain anything. Just go. But when you are explaining, I rather have no me. <laughs> so just shut up and take your explanation away. Because I get I'm angry. I'm not God. Like I'm not God who created the world. I'm, I'm a child of God. You understand? But you see, the word of God is helping us. So, so you see that my anger issue is becoming better. Now, when they, when they are saying something, they say, oh, this is, I say, okay, oh, really? Oh, then do it like, oh, then nice, then nice. It wasn't like that before. Because I said, ah, what was it? I went, let me Maybe you have come, pa. One day, we, we had our church service. We had our church service at Ligon Botanical Gardens. That day, those who were there, they didn't like the sermon. Ah, the sermon, it was full of blasting. I was so annoyed with what they were doing. So I prepared the sermon. It was a sermon on the mount. It was Mount Sinai. Full wood. Burning. I was so annoyed. At Legon Botanical Gardens. That day, when, when I came out of the car, someone who came to me and said, Pastor, we have found a place there. I said, You are not serious. <laughs> From the gate, too. I said, You are not serious. So I saw that his face changed, his countenance changed. <laughs> you see. But I see that the, from that time to now, I said, Me change. I said, No, boy, I'm going home. <laughs> and, I, and I can see this man too is changing. This man now, first when I used to say something, let's do this. Oh, yes, let's do it. I think let's do it. Now he says, Oh, Pastor. Oh, we consider. Oh, consider. Pure in heart. Pure in heart. <laughs> so you see that in the English, when you take pure in heart, you think that ah, heart that cannot be stained. No. 
when you go and check you see that it is rather heart that does not keep things heart that it allows things to go it's moving 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 it flows because that's where the issues of life come from that's a pure heart so when you understand like you see that ah oh then we can have a pure heart but if you understand it, pure heart, no stain, you say, which, which boy are those? Are they also in this world? But with this understanding that I'm teaching you, you see that, oh, then, say, 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 me, 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 me yesterday, park, I have a pure heart. Me yesterday, now, me, 2005, who you say? Who you say, who you say, who you say, every time, who play recorder? No, no, no. So, I think that we have to read to verse 47. But I think that let's go to Galatians 5. So many people are coughing. What's going on? What's going on? Is that in the setting count? <laughs> but five verse one, uh huh stand fast therefore in the liberty by which christ has made us free so stand fast when he says stand fast do you know what it means it means what Gina painting this is why you need the shoes of peace hmm. that is in is in ephesians 6 when we were saying armor of god you need it to what stand fast stand fast and firm and he says, stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. So Jesus brought us liberty, freedom, freedom, freedom from sin, freedom from the rudimentary elements of this world, freedom from demons. We are not at the mercy of demons. Freedom from the tyrannical rule of darkness. Stand fast in this liberty by which Christ has made us free. Uh -huh. And do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. And do not be entangled again. Do you know that ignorantly, by ignorance, you can entangle yourself mm -hmm. with a yoke of bondage. Yes, sir. Even though Jesus has made you free. Yes, sir. And also by what? Holding on to religion. It can entangle you again, even though you are free. Even though you are free. But you can you can go under bondage again. So he says, Do not be entangled, but rather stand fast. The shoes of peace is for this one. It's for this one to stand fast in the liberty that is in Christ, the freedom that is in Jesus stand fast jesus purchased my freedom i'm going to enjoy it you see make up your mind i will live what he died for i will enjoy what he died for what he paid with his blood i will enjoy it stand fast in it next verse indeed i paul say to you that if you if you become circumcised christ will profit you nothing so those days they were preaching that when you believe in jesus as a gentile cram poor you have to be circumcised and circumcision was for only the jews do you know circumcision yeah. or there's somebody who doesn't know if you're a guy here and you don't know check check when you go home go and check whether <laughs> check check there's something Oh, one day when you have a son, you have to take the son. Now they do it not for religious purposes. Now they do it because medically they have seen that it helps to remove the false king. But there are, are white people that don't do it. Some are old. Some are old. Our teacher taught us a song in class five. He said, mm -mm, mm -mm, hey, yeah, yeah, real. <laughs> Mm -mm, 
<laughs> so now in those days when the church started in Galatia these were, these were Gentiles when they say Gentiles they were like us we are not Jews you are from Ghana those days people were teaching that so you read in, in Galatians chapter 2 Paul restricted in fact he stood up to Peter when the Jewish people came Peter was mingling with them but he, because the Jewish guys were coming he said he won't work with them again and Paul called Peter a hypocrite so what they were teaching was that okay you guys you were not Jews like us you are Gentiles and you have also become believers like us but you know now that you are believers still you must circumcise yourselves so that you can be like us but you see Paul now was teaching that in Christ circumcision avails nothing because there's no Jew there's no Greek but we are all one there's no slave there's no free there's no male there's no female continue please he says I say to you that if you become circumcised so that you think that ah, I'm circumcised so now I'm holy he says Christ will profit you nothing next verse and I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. When you become, he's telling them, when you become circumcised, then you must take the law. Mm. Because the law came with it. Then you are trying to put yourself, what? Under the law. It is like, it's like you are from Ghana. You have become a believer now. You want to live like a Jew. You want to celebrate Hanukkah. You want to celebrate this. You want all the, oh, you want to celebrate Passover. Every Jewish thing, you want to be part of it. Your name, Christ, you may have changed your name to Rephaim. Rephaim ben, ben Yuda. Ben Yuda Asari. Rephaim Ben Yuda Asari. It says, when, when you become circumcised, Christ will avail nothing, will mean nothing to you. And, and if you become circumcised, you must by, by force, you become a debtor. When they say you are in debt, it means that you owe the law. You owe. You must keep the law. But this is the freedom Jesus brought. Freedom from the law. Whose our persons are called back? Next verse. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to, who, you who attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. Now, have you heard a statement? Fall from grace. People use it a lot. Hey, this guy has fallen from grace. What she has said? Eh? He said, What she has said? He has fallen from grace. What the Bible teaches as falling from grace is not what people mean by falling from grace. When people say falling from grace, it means you have become what? Unsaved. That's what they mean. Like you have, you have become unsaved, so you must be saved again. Do you know that? It's like you have lost your salvation. When they say you are falling from grace, they, they, they mean it that you have, you have lost your salvation. But when you check the Bible, where the phrase came from, you see that that's not what it was saying. That's why you see you must be studious. You must study the word. That is how not to be deceived. When they say fall from grace, often they are saying that you have lost your salvation. But we can see from the Bible that salvation cannot be lost. Because it does not involve any human... What? You don't, you don't add your part. It is, not, it is not you that keep the salvation running. Salvation is a work of grace. Now, when they say you fall from grace, this brother has fallen from grace. It's as though the brother or sister has lost their salvation. But this is where that statement came. Galatians 5. See it. See what it means to fall from grace according to the scriptures. You see, the Bible has a voice. Let the Bible speak. When we come to learn the Bible, let's forget what we know and take what the Bible is saying. 
That's how we will grow. Because whether you like it or not, we all have an opinion. But Bible study is no opinion pool. It's not what you think. What do you think? I don't think anything. Look. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law. Anytime you seek justification by the law, you have become a stranger to Christ. Because you can't do Christ and the law at the same time. Any teaching that tells you, oh, you're decreased to the by the Moses in Muran also. Oh, you're decreased to you by the Muran also. And maybe at the entrance of the church, they build a big plaque. They have written the Ten Commandments on it. People can even come there and pray to it. That's how far religion will go with you. Look, you have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. This is what it means to fall from grace. To fall from grace simply means forgetting Christ and wanting to go by the law. Let me do it. Let me receive. Let me do Let me do. Like the Israelites. He said, oh, anything the Lord says, we will do it. But eventually, they didn't do it. Anytime you neglect Christ, the grace that is in him, and want to do it by yourself, he says, you are falling from grace. Let's stay here with another verse, and then we can close. Another, I mean, another translation. If you want to be made holy by fulfilling the obligations of the law, you have cut off more than your flesh. You have cut yourselves off from the anointed one and have fallen away from the revelation of grace. If you want to be made holy then by fulfilling the obligations of the law, you will meet some of your friends, your colleagues and all that. Say, hey, me the, the law of Moses, oh, ha, me the laws. Kokoti sushi. Hey, this is our church there. Here the man If you want to seek justification from the law by fulfilling the law, it says we are falling from grace. Because you cannot you cannot acknowledge the law and grace at the same time. That's what Jesus meant by you can't put old wine in if I can't put new wine in old wine skin. That's why I said most of his, his statements were coded. But with the help of the Holy Spirit now, we can go back and decode it together. When Jesus said you can't put new wine in old wine skin, he was simply saying that the New Testament was coming. You can't mix it with the law. Else it would stretch. That's what he said. He said the wine skin will stretch and explode and the drink will come out. The law and grace, the New Testament and the Old Testament is like water and oil. You can't mix it. If the Old Testament was sufficient, why do we have a new one? Romans chapter 8 verse 2 He said the law could not fulfill anything because of that he says for what the law could not do God did by sending his son so the law had a limit that's why Jesus came somebody sang a song he said Anye ye na yesu baye. that's true Anye ye na yesu baye. ah say ye ye a yesu baba ye den e ye ye a yesu baba ye den Romans 8, 3, yes. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did. What the law could not do, God did. And how did God do it? By sending his own son. So, the law and grace, they are two opposite things. They are two extremes. You can't combine the two. Back to Galatians. 
You can't combine the two. You can't say, oh, I believe in Jesus, but I live under the law. And you think that when you do that, when you say that, when I was saying, oh, we should rather be laughing at you. And we should be feeling sorry for you. Because what you are doing, you are falling from grace. But not that you have lost your salvation. What I say? As for salvation there, it's je, 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 je. But you are falling from grace, meaning that you have left the grace which is in Christ and you want to be you want to do it by yourself. You want to live by your works. Another another translation, please. I suspect you would never intend this, but this is what happens. When you attempt take your time. Take your time. When you attempt to live by your own religious plans and projects. Projects you are cut off from Christ. Christ, you fall out of grace. When you try to do it, this is what happens. You see, there's somebody who has done it. Live with him. Lean on him. Not even lean on him. Be with him. Instead of trying to do your own thing. When you try to do your own thing, that is falling from grace. Not, hey, this guy used to come to church. He's not coming again. He has fallen from grace. No, no, no. You see, there are so many things if you go into the Bible and they'll say you are controversial. Because many times, I said, they try to read meanings into the scripture instead of taking the meaning from the scripture. Can you go? Mo ah, mo pese, wadem ranu bu mo bem no anytime somebody comes to you and they are telling you why you should you should subscribe to the law of Moses they are cutting you off from Jesus they are cutting you off hey you are sorry wait there huh? He has a man shirt trouser. A marble bomb pile on the way to Tiron tea. Hey, yeah, a man man's who shut down. No, this story. A man man shut down. They are having some churches, a wedding, wedding. They are having wedding. They don't let them kiss the bride. Yes, ah, uh, uh, we have been to a wedding before. That the man of God said, "You know, you can't do that here. So it's the altar. It's the altar. So, so when you go home, you see people pretend about these things. That's why you find a lot of people in church doing so many things. Uh, if you think that you can't consecrate the marriage in church." Then why are you doing it? If it's not holy enough for you to kiss your wife here, then why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Another person even says that, eh, wedding there, you know what event center? You wedding or beach? You know some of you, you want to have fa your fairy tale wedding be at the beach so that we all come there. You you do it at some beach. The sea is there. As small settings. As small settings. Assume more settings. A lot of settings. Then when 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 those of us that will come for your wedding, when we come today, Monday rather is a voice. No? <laughs> those of us that will come for the wedding, Oba now try snapper. Now the voice now she magic off. And it's magic off. <laughs> it's more with the off, 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 off. <laughs> Or you put Alfred Bedidier when they serve the food. Alfred Bedidier. 
made it here. So, you see that people have gone extreme with some things, eh? So they have gone extreme. As for me, I want to stay with what the, Bible's, the Bible talks about. My voice is loud where the Bible is loud. I'm quiet where the Bible says nothing. So, now, someone says that, eh, why would you have a wedding at the beach? Maybe that's your, your, you and your husband or fiancé or whatever. That's your fairy tale. And me, me, my, me, where I'll come in is that, Charlie, do you have the budget for it? Are you sure that you won't finish this and we have to do a pew for fun for you? That's where me, I'll come in. But if that's your year, I, I don't have any problem. We won't, you don't have to do wedding at the, the guest, what's the name? Event center. You have to strictly do your wedding in church. If not, we won't come. So imagine I say, if not, pastor won't come for your wedding. If it's not at the church, our pastor won't come. It's happening now. If not, pastor won't come. Then some people argue that because the church, there's an altar there. So the altar will protect your wedding. You see, when you try to think plenty, these are the things that you start, you start doing. When you try to think plenty, don't you go, for the, don't you go to the beach for vacation and normal and you, Eh? When you read the scripture, and God, where didn't put the air with you? And I saw them. I saw him cry about now about being serious. So I'm Yes, yes, you call wet, and when you be feeling normal, you see, like the one here, no? that one, our voice, hey, and I don't hear wedding or we'll, we'll beach. Me, I know them. Me, the problem, man, is actually. Because obviously you try to do something. I saw a wedding budget. Hmm? They, they had names for it. The highest one was 500,000 to 700,000. And I said, wow. But you'll be shocked. Somebody can do it and not feel anything. Uh -huh. So that person is not, that person is not a stress. Who, that person is not a stress. The stress is when your money can do only 20,000 wedding. And you try to do 700,000 wedding. You go for a loan. Go for a loan. So me, that's the only place I'll say, oh, are you, when I'm counseling you, I'll ask you, are you sure? Are you sure finances can do this? Are you sure? Because last three weeks or so, Moses blesses wedding. I was telling you, Jemima and you that ah, every day, they have, how many days are they married? Because every day I open my phone, I'll see that they are married. Then I open the next day, they are wearing different clothes. They are married again. I say, what's going on? And you see how classy it was. But, you see, nobody gives out what for best wedding. Yes. Wedding Ben and Baganada. Oh, that's why it's never worried. Oh, ha. Never be brave. Worry, I'm a young man. She said, I don't know how to so they are. But for me to come and say that, hey, why are you getting married at this event center? Or why are you getting married in this garden? You know, some of you like garden wedding. So you have booked some nice garden with plenty of flowers. My main concern will be, are your parents in agreement to give you out? Because it's mostly about the parents, their consent. You will need that one more. If you are going to get married, your father said no. How can I come and bless it? You have to find a way for your father to agree. If he's alive in quad here, his consent is important. His, your mother, the, your parents, they, they, they brought you here. That's my concern. Not, hey, okay, you are all tabby. Oh, big man. Big man. You see? Say your Bible need to honor you hear all that things. I say how. Say how. Your Bible need to honor you hear all your idea. Eh? I don't know it, man. I don't know ni musubio. I don't know ni musubio. The tree has two versions. Read the second one. I think we can close. Yeah, our time is up. So falling from grace is not losing your salvation. Falling from grace simply means forgetting about the grace that is in Christ 
and trying to do your own thing, trying to deserve your own thing. Who person who deserve deserve? Who person why are you what idea? Bible say no foundation can anyone lay than what Jesus has laid. You say no, I want to lay my own. I mean, God can do. I mean, I mean, who sent him to lay? I mean, I want to lay my own. I mean, I want nonsense. I mean, I want to lay my own thing. I mean, I want to do my own. Thing. Did I say anything? Please read it and let me. Ah, mo pese wo bumu bem mranu muno. What it say mo? What it say mo? Every Christo ho. Mo every adumu ashi ase. Inti ashi ase. Eno ni ase. Hey, what the guy ready? No, the Christo ni se 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 oko hell. But eh, but ni aduku no no. Ya kase ubi ashi ase ya. Is what? We free Christo mu. I confirm, I know. That's all. Ever saw them run the puny who been. He wants to live by the law instead of grace. That's how she has here. How she has here. How she has. Amen. God bless you. Speaking tongues for a while and let.